Salazar, like most ball players, slides on only one side. So he really slides into that tag. It's the rare player who can slide either way. If he hooks on his right hip, he gets away from that tag. Looked like his only chance to make the play was to take his body out into the outfield and grab it with his hands. Right. Oh, and one to Marty Castillo and a little business. Remember, all the stations along the network at the end of this half inning in the bottom of the eighth, we'll have an extra station identification. Fastball. Oh, one and two. The question of Salazar, though, is if you're the tying runner and you are going to steal, you can't get picked off. You've got to get thrown out if you are indeed running. And the team with the better overall speed, better than perhaps the Cubs, pays for the fact that Martinez does not run well. If Martinez ran well, he had an easy double. And instead, he has to stop with a single. Salazar runs for him, and he's picked off. You really get down to two plays now. The inability to get Wiggins home in the first inning. And the pop fly that was caught by Wiggins instead of Gwynn that allowed Gibson to come home. They'll haunt San Diego all winter. Well, that last play by Salazar is not exactly going to put him to sleep. <laughs> two and two. Three and two. Kirk Gibson has been vitally involved. He had a two run home run and he scored in the fifth inning on the fly ball to Wiggins. And Gossage walks Castillo, opening up the bottom of the eighth. Lou Whitaker is the batter. Remember, Castillo singled in the sixth inning. They didn't have Whitaker bunting. They had him swing away, and Garvey turned to double play at first with Trammell to follow, and their lead cut to one again. We'll see whether they have Whitaker bunting. Nettles, one step up in front of the bag, fouled away. 0 and 1. Goose made a throw to first base. Nothing else, letting Castillo know that I know you're there. Anderson has tremendous faith in Whitaker, even against steam or heat like Gossett. Being left handed, he might just let him hack away. We'll see. Trammell on deck. Yep, he's got him around. Bunning a one hopper to Nettles. He's going to go to Templeton. He's off the bag. He missed the bag. He wasn't expecting the throw. He was off the bag. I can't believe what's happening. It's like a. Uh, Padre Busters. I mean, the Gremlins have hit the field. Guys are not catching fly balls. He assumed he was going to first base. Now watch this. Nettles, he doesn't hesitate, and Templeton is standing in front of the bag. He's in front of the bag. He got caught in a cookie jar. Look at the look on Templeton. You don't have to say anything. He's so shocked. Oh, my he, goodness. He can't believe he did that himself. He was in front of the bag. I mean, it's a real Halloween finish. There's the bunt to Gossage, and he has to throw to Wiggins. The figures they'll take the bat right out of Gibson's hand. And now Dick Williams is going to go out there because Kennedy held up four fingers and then went out to the mound. Well, let's see. Well, you gotta you gotta believe that he's gonna put him on with four pitches. But if he starts to fool around and throw a couple pitches and get a couple strikes, don't you know that Sparky will be screaming about that Raleigh Fingers Johnny Bench play? That's right. You have to turn the clock back with two strikes on Bench. Dick went out to the mound, caught the fingers. Tennis held his hand out as if we're going to put him aboard. Suddenly, Tennis dropped into a crouch. Bingo, strike three. Well, they're making a decision here, and Williams is in charge. You know what's interesting? Kirk Gibson made his major league debut, his very first at bat in the big leagues, against Goose Gossett. That's a great way to break in. And Gossett struck him out on three pitches. Blew him away, Sparky says. And maybe because of that, Gossett is saying, I can get him. Well, we'll see. Ball one. 
The infield is up. They give Gibson the left field foul line. Brown is in left. And there it goes. 